What is good everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Paul and I make videos about Japanese society, life and culture from the viewpoint of a long-term foreign resident. I've been in Japan 18 years and today I'm actually going to be talking to you about why you might not want to live abroad. And the inspiration for this episode is those of you who follow the channel regularly maybe notice that I haven't dropped a video in several weeks now and the reason for that is acting as an inspiration for today's video and let's get right into the topic of which I divide into two sections. Basically two layers to why you may want to reconsider living abroad at all or even for the long term. Now the first reason is it's actually very difficult to leave negative things behind when you move to a foreign country. I think a lot of people have this image or idea that when you move abroad, if you suffer from anxiety or depression or you have things going on in your personal life in your home country that you feel you might be able to escape from by having a complete change of scenery, very often the case, it doesn't actually work out that way. Those negative influences or those negative things in your life tend to actually travel with you. And I would say I've met a lot of foreigners in Japan who have complained about Japan, they complained about their hometown, they complained about other countries that they lived in before moving to Japan, and you end up getting the sense that they would be unhappy anywhere they were that their issues of anxiety or depression or culture shock, regardless of what culture it is, seem to follow them along. And that's not to say this is what will happen to everyone. I'm sure some people have managed to escape their problems by moving abroad. And if you're someone like that, go ahead and feel free to add your story in the comments if you'd like. But for the most part, it's not an easy thing to go abroad and just leave everything behind, especially because if you're already suffering from various issues or you're estranged from your family, you're going to be that much farther away from them and you're going to find yourself in a new country with new norms, different cultures, a language that might be difficult or that you, you know, only know a rudimentary amount of. And so you're actually potentially compounding your problems by adding culture shock, inability to function in your new society as easily as you would have. So if you have things like depression and anxiety, those can certainly be amplified. Now, that's the first aspect. It's difficult to leave negative things behind. And unfortunately, the opposite is not true with positive things, meaning a lot of the positive things about your life in your home country are difficult to bring along, if not impossible. And this leads me to my own personal story of why I didn't drop videos for a few weeks. Now, the truth of moving abroad is you're giving up a lot of the good things you had back in your home country. Meaning, if you have good friendships and you have strong ties with your family, like those things won't necessarily disappear, but you're going to be so much farther away from them. And you're going to have pretty much no choice but to miss important events or be distanced from them. Like the birthdays, the graduations, the, the weddings, you know, all of these events that are going to happen in the lives of your family and friends back home, that unless you're living a pretty wealthy, and time abundant lifestyle, it's gonna be hard to travel back for these things. Certainly if you're doing trans-Pacific flights like I am. Now, for example, I just missed my niece's graduation. That was a graduation from high school back in the spring. I missed my nephew's confirmation. Um, and you know, all these things that go by, like my best friend's birthday and all of these things that you're just going to miss, not to mention holidays, which are going to feel very, very different. For example, this year, I'm teaching classes on Christmas Day. It's not the first year that I've had to do this, but you know, for me who celebrates Christmas and has all these happy Christmas memories, you know, it's 
a little bit tough to be teaching, working on Christmas Day, and that's just normal here. Now, that doesn't mean you can't create and bring about your own traditions, which I would say I'm very privileged, I'm, I'm lucky to have a family where we've forged our own Christmas traditions in recent years, and I wouldn't give those up for anything. So, that's not to say you can't cope and begin your own traditions in your new country. But it is at these times, these holidays or these events with your family and friends back home that you're going to feel depressed, you're going to feel like lack of continuity, you're going to feel displaced, greatly separated. And for me, most recently, it's because my father just passed away and so I had to fly back to the States for a funeral. I actually got to say goodbye, so I was there before he passed, which was very, very nice. But, you know, we were looking at flights back in summer for, you know, summer of 2023 to visit, but with the yen being so incredibly weak, like I mentioned, if you're not making a lot of money, we would have had to pay in life equivalent money about $8,000 for proper flights and for the three of us to be able to travel back, and that's just prohibitively expensive. So, you might think, oh, I'll be able to go back and visit whenever I want. Well, hopefully you have the funds and the time to do so. As it was, I went back by myself. My wife and kid did not come along, and they had to say goodbye from afar. And this is exactly what I'm getting at. The fact that you are going to feel so far away from things, even if you video chat and call your family all the time, I mean, in my case, we've chatted every week, um, at least once, sometimes more, video chat, etc. But even this going back to the States to be with my family due to my father's passing, it's... You can't help but escape a sort of feeling of guilt and, you know, selfishness for being so far away. And, you know, I can only go and lend my support to my mother and the rest of my family for a few days and it's over all too quickly and then you're like well I have to fly back across the ocean to the other side of the world in a time zone completely opposite and live out my life that I've chosen <laughs> for myself and I mean my family would tell me no you know you've, you've made a great life don't worry about it it's not selfish and I, I believe them but uh, that feeling of course is going to persist and so these are Some of the really serious issues that you really should consider if you're thinking about living abroad moving abroad and certainly staying abroad for any real length of time so There it is some heartfelt advice I mean as for where I am in my life. I don't really regret being in Japan, so I'm not sitting here wallowing in self-pity or anything like that, so don't worry about me in that sense. But I felt it was something important to talk about and share to anyone who might be thinking about living a similar lifestyle. So, thank you very much for watching. I will be going back to my one to two uploads a week starting this week, so if you've been wanting my content you know it's going to be back up and running again and if you're new to the channel please check out all of my other stuff where i talk about life and culture here for a long-term resident and yeah thanks for watching this particular video add your own stories and ideas in the comments below make it a discussion because that's fun for me as well and thanks for watching this particular video i'll catch you on the next one peace